Hi there, it's Bill Peterson, aka The White Tornado, here for Geek Funk Labs, and this is the MIDI Foot, a one button USB MIDI controller that you can buy as a kit or get fully assembled. It's class compliant, meaning it gets recognized as a MIDI device when you plug it in, no need for any extra drivers. As you can see in the MIDI monitor, it sends the sustain pedal message on channel 15 with a rotating sequence of values that means you can use it in a lot of different ways. For example, you can use it in your digital audio workstation or synthesizer software to act as a sustain pedal for your keyboard. Many programs will also let you map those messages to other functions such as record or change scene. The MIDI foot also pairs nicely with another Geek Funk Labs product, the Squish Box, where you could use it as a kick drum pedal, a toggle switch, or even to play 4, 8, or 16 step patterns. Here's what comes in the kit. Let's put this thing together. The shorter components like resistors are a good place to start. Match up their code in the parts list with the silk screen, push their legs through and bend them back to keep the parts in place. Make sure the stripe on the diodes lines up with the one on the silk screen, like so. Now's a good time for some soldering. Poster putty's my favorite trick for holding things in place, but you do you. Make sure that stripe on the big capacitor lines up with the minus sign on the silk screen. That's also where the short leg goes. Good idea to solder just a couple pins on these IC sockets first, then you can make sure it's nice and flush with the board before you do the rest. Time to hook up the brains, the AT Tiny 85 microcontroller. Make sure to put it in the right way. The little dot should be on the same side as the notch on the silk screen.
All right, now we just need to add connections. These pads show you how you can solder a USB cable directly to the board, if you've got one you want to slice apart. Otherwise, you can just use the included B-Jack. The header in this corner will be for the button. Time to strip and tin some wires. I just love colored ribbon cable. A good trick someone showed me to speed up prepping wires is to just pull the insulation off a little bit. Then you can twist as you pull it off to keep those strands nice and tight. Push those wires in a bit further while you heat the solder to get the insulation to melt to the board for a little bit of extra strain relief. There's our boy. Now we just need a box to mount everything in. A little plastic box like this one can work fine. Just drill some holes that are big enough for the button in the USB port. Then you can hot glue the board into place after lining up the plug. If you want something a little more rugged, you could get a stop switch and mount it in an aluminum enclosure like this one. Or you can use a limit switch in one of these 3D printed housings. There's a link to the model down in the video description. And there it is, the finished MIDI foot, a class compliant single button USB MIDI controller for those times when you just need to send some MIDI with your foot. Links to schematics and design files are in the video description below, as well as places you can get a kit or a fully assembled unit. Until next time, stay funky. Hey Dingles, do you think people will give me a hard time about my background music again? Okay, just keep it down this time.
Got it. Thanks, buddy.